Legends of the Saints Patrick, the Reluctant Irishman by John Watechko Read by John Kenyon Sunlight pierced my eyes as I woke up to the smell of salt in the air. Where am I? I mumbled. My ears were ringing and everything around me was spinning. Ah, he's awake, an unfamiliar voice said. The, the last thing I remember, I continued. My parents were at mass and I was walking through town and someone jumped out of the shadows. <laughs> and we knocked you out and dragged you onto our boat, the unknown voice laughed. Boat? I exclaimed. Why? Where, where are we going? We're off to Ireland, the stranger said. Ireland? No, no, I, I won't. I need to go back home now. You've got bigger troubles than that, boy. The pirate walked over to me and knelt down so I could smell his rancid breath. But what do you mean, I asked. When we land, how, how do I put this delicately? He put his hand on my shoulder and gave it a little pat. You're going to be sold as a slave. A slave? But I can't. I, I have a home. Parents, what if I die there? Then God have mercy on your soul, he growled. A few hours later, I heard church bells ringing across the waves. I couldn't see the church through the mist, but I knew we must be approaching land. My heart ached as I thought of my parents heading off to church the last time I saw them. Little did I know I would never see that church. When we finally reached the shore, the pirates sold me to a stocky fellow, about 40 years old, with a worn face and dark eyes. For as long as I knew that man, I sensed an unquenchable fire of hate within him. We walked back to his farm in silence. He never told me his name and he never asked for mine. And when we arrived on his land, he immediately started barking orders at me. You wake up at five. You tend to the sheep. You're in bed at midnight. You get a bowl of gruel each morning and a crust of bread each evening. I, I've never been a shepherd before, I stammered. I don't even like animals. I... The man smacked me across the face. And you never speak back to your master, he growled through gritted teeth. I silently rubbed my stinging cheek. Now, take the sheep out to pasture. Milk them. Protect them from the wolves. And never forget, he squinted his eyes, their lives are more important than yours. I held back tears, and as I fearfully went to begin my work, he called to me over his shoulder. There's nowhere to go, so don't even think about running away. But running away was exactly what I was thinking about. After a back-breaking day, I was dripping with sweat despite the cold weather. And as I settled into my tiny slave shack, I knew I was going to make my escape that night. The silence in the air was deafening. Was he asleep? How could I know? It was too risky making my move while he was still awake. If he caught me, who knows what would happen? He treated me miserably as it was. I was ready to abandon my escape when suddenly I heard the church bells ring out. This was my chance. Their booming toll would cover up any sounds of my escape. I ran out of the shack and sprinted away from the property. I didn't know where I was going. I just knew I had to get away. I tried to follow the bell sound, but I couldn't see the church anywhere. Even in the light of the full moon, there were no people or buildings nearby, just trees and mountains and bats. I didn't know which direction to go. I was running out of energy. I'd been working all day and had hardly eaten. I fell to my knees to catch my breath, and it was only then that I realized how tired I truly was. I couldn't go any further, and if I didn't want to die in this desolate landscape, I had to return to my shack. 
I trudged back to my dwelling, despising the power my master had over me, only to discover him outside my door, waiting for me. I told you not to run away, he said as he smacked me. You don't have a prayer of escape. You're here forever. He beat me again and left me sprawled on the ground as he returned to his house. I crawled into my hard bed, depressed, disillusioned, and hopeless. I accepted my fate. I would never attempt that dangerous journey again. I would never find the church. The farm and the field would be my entire world. Each day was worse than the last. I worked myself to the bone with little sleep and even less to eat. My heart broke each morning when I thought about my lost family. I wanted to leave this land and never return. But I knew that this was my life now, and there was nothing I could do about it. Three years into my captivity, one of the sheep broke its leg while I was out with the flock. Mindlessly, I ripped off a part of my cloak and wrapped the creature's leg. But it was unable to walk unaided. So I hoisted it onto my back, not because I wanted to. <laughs> I only hated animals more after all this time, but because I had to. My master's words from three years before echoed in my head. Their lives are more important than yours. My pace slowed to a crawl as the sun began to set. This was dangerous. I had never been this far from the farm at night. I hurried the sheep along, but they only grew slower in the dark. When the sky became black, a piercing howl broke through the night. I had heard that sound many times before, but never this close. It was the unmistakable call of a wolf. I dropped the sheep from my back and started to run, but it was no use. Before I knew it, more and more howls filled the air, getting closer and closer. I was surrounded. It was too dark to make out their forms, but from the number of glowing eyes I could see, there were at least dozens. The howls turned into growls. The wolves were about to attack. When the church bells rang, I couldn't believe that their tolls reverberated this far into the wilderness. But the wolves immediately scurried away. Confused, I picked up the injured sheep and continued guiding the flock back home. Once the sheep were safe in their pen, I settled into bed and again heard the church bells chime. At the time, it never seemed odd to me that the bells rang so often and so late. As they rang out, the memory of my parents going to church entered my mind. That was the last time I saw them. They had such a strong devotion to God, but I never really knew him. In that moment, though, I decided to open myself up to him. God, I started. Father, if, if you're there, please watch over me. Thanks. And for a month, every evening when I heard the church bells ring, I said a similar prayer. After a while, I was praying in the morning as well. Soon, I was praying throughout the day as I pastured the flock. <laughs> I even started growing fond of the sheep as I learned to see his face in his creatures. And as I prayed, my love of God, the fear of him, and faith in him all increased. My spirit was so moved that I started saying up to a hundred prayers a day and just as many at night. I prayed in the forests and on the mountains, in the snow and in the rain, yet I felt neither ill nor fatigue because as I understand now, the Spirit was burning within me. After months of ceaseless prayer, a voice came to me in a dream and said, It would be right for you to fast. Soon you will depart for your home country. At first I was confused. Fast? 
I barely ate as it was, but I trusted God. This was the message I had been yearning for. Since I stepped foot on this land six years before, I had longed to escape it, and now God was going to answer my prayer. I followed the voice's command and began a fast. Even though I was starving, I never felt weak. I had just enough energy to do all my work and prayers. A week later, the same voice echoed in my dream and prophesied, Behold, your ship is ready. Without hesitation, I jumped out of bed, and under the cover of the church bells, I ran away from my captivity just like that night six years ago. This time, though, I was not scared. God protected me and guided me through the empty darkness. As the sun rose, I felt as energized as I did when I began my escape. Even as day turned into night, I never lost an ounce of energy or faith. Finally, after three days and 200 miles of running, I arrived at port. At first, the ship steersman sharply turned me away. The ship don't take freeloaders, he said. But as I walked away, the dogs aboard the ship began howling. I hurried to comfort them, a reflex from the care I was accustomed to giving the sheep. And as soon as I walked on deck, the dogs settled. The steerman commanded me to get off his ship. But as I complied, the dogs once again yelped and howled. Fine, the steerman finally growled. You can come aboard if only to keep them dogs quiet. As the ship set sail and the sun began to rise over the watery horizon, the church bells rang out again. I thanked God for rescuing me from this forsaken land, and I vowed never to return. What's the name of that church? I inquired of one of the crew. What church? he asked. The church with those beautiful bells. There's no church in Ireland, he said. What are you talking about? I insisted. I've heard them for the last six years. They're ringing now. You, you must hear them. Look here, kid, the sailor said. There ain't never been a church in Ireland, and I don't hear no bells. I stood stunned for a moment. No church? That can't be. Those bells had been a constant in my life since the moment I arrived in Ireland. Even though I had never seen the church, I knew it must be there. And in an instant, the truth opened to me. That ringing, it wasn't bells. I was hearing God. He had been with me the whole time, not just when I started praying, but always. I just didn't recognize him. He was there on the pirate ship. He was there when I was sold. He was there when I tried to escape. And he was certainly there the night the wolves attacked. He had been by my side, keeping me safe and alive. From that moment, I felt like a new man. At sunset, the ship docked. I set foot in my homeland for the first time in six years. I ran home to see my parents. It was getting dark, but it didn't matter. If I could travel the foreign plains of Ireland in the dark, surely I could do the same in my hometown. As a final remnant of sunlight faded away, I knocked on my front door, and my father opened it. He stared at me, speechless. Who is it, Capernaus? I heard my mother from inside. It's, it's, my father was trembling. My mother, as wonderfully impatient as ever, came to the door to see who had arrived. My son, she screamed. Both of my parents hugged me tightly, and we all began to cry. We talked all night. They asked me what had happened, where I had been, how I had survived how I had escaped. I would not be here, I told them, if it had not been for God. Amen, 
my father answered. When I had settled back into my old life, I asked God to guide me to the proper vocation. After much discernment, it became clear that I was being called to the priesthood. I entered the seminary and began my education. On the eve of my ordination, I had another vision in my dreams. A saint was carrying many letters, and he handed one to me. I looked down at the envelope. It was sent from the voice of the Irish. As I read the letter, countless voices called out to me. We beg you, holy boy, come and walk among us. The pains of these people stung my heart so intensely that I could read no more, and I awoke with a jolt. And so, after many years of cursing and longing to escape the land of my imprisonment, I chose to go back. I returned to that formerly foreign land to build God's church so that others could hear the bells as I did. That land would become my home, the beautiful country of Ireland. A production of We Are One Body Audio Theatre.